Thank you. I'm a guitar player who plays folk music, but in the early 1970s, I started to play in some of the Greek nightclubs in Toronto. I arrived in Athens in early autumn of 1974. I had been traveling and playing through Europe for several months and decided it was time to go to Greece and play. I had with me a letter from my good friend in Toronto, Yanakos Xiluris, which I was to give to his cousin, who he said, quote, was a singer and would probably be able to find work for me as a guitar player. Since at that time I understood very little Greek, I had no idea what was in the letter, and I had one further problem. Yanakos didn't have Nikos new address, but he said, don't worry, everyone knows him. <laughs> I found out that was true, but no one either knew how to find him, or they knew, and didn't want to give me that information. After several days of looking, I ended up at Panavar Records, where I asked how I would find Nikos. The owner was very vague until I showed him the letter, at which point he got out his address book and gave me Nikos' new address. I found a taxi and the gave the driver the address. It was in the suburbs. I was downtown. Athens in the fall of 1974 was in turmoil. The junta had recently fallen and there were demonstrations everywhere. There was going to be elections soon, as well as a referendum on the return of the king. So we spent much of the time going around demonstrations and rallies by royalists, communists, PASOK, and neo-democratia. <laughs> when I arrived at Nikos' house, I found out from his wife, Urania, and his nephew, Thomas, who spoke English, that Nikos had just left and had gone to the club for a rehearsal. So I got into a taxi and went down to Plaka, about 10 blocks from where I had started out from. <laughs> I arrived at the club, Boat Rizes. I found Nikos, gave him the letter, which he seemed to, to be really impressed with, and said through a translator, without even asking to hear me, that he would find me a job. Unfortunately, he had just hired his band, so he would have to find something else for me, but said I should come to all the rehearsals because people in the music business were always coming around. He was right. The owner of Boat Rizes also owned a club around the corner called Archondisa, where Dolores and Aristides Moschos played, and there was a parade of musicians, singers, and composers through the club. At one point, I happened to mention to the bass player that I was a sound man and I had worked with most of the major North American and British acts. He told Nikos and immediately I became the sound mixer for the band, a new concept in Greece, having someone at the controls for the whole show. <laughs> Usually they just set the controls and left them. <laughs> Boaturizas was much lar larger than any club I had ever been in. It held hundreds of people and had a huge stage and a very large band. Lira, lauto, bazooki, guitar, bass, drums, santuri, clarinet, flute, recorder, and backup singers. The show started with Nico singing a few Markopolis songs and the next act was Lida and Spiros, a socially minded American style folk act that sang Pablo Neruda songs. The following act was Thanasis Gaifilias, a left-wing singer, followed by Vomna Samiu with Petros Kalibas and Aleko Arapakis. When Nikos returned to the stage, he sang all his hits, ending, of course, with Xasteria, and the audience went wild. There were two two-hour shows each night, and entrance was a few hundred drachmas that included one drink and a bowl of peanuts. The audience was a true mix of Greek society, students, activists, politicians, business people, other musicians, and a whole range of the general public. We worked six nights a week from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m., but after some time, the owner decided to have Robetica on our day off with Rosa Eskenazi and her band. What was Nico like? He was very quiet and unassuming off stage, but always had a presence. You noticed him even when he was sitting quietly in a chair. He was also a nice guy. I remember one incident that happened at the club. For several days in a row, there was an elderly woman standing in the doorway watching the show. You could tell by the way she was dressed that she was not able to afford a ticket, and the only way she was going to hear the show was from outside. Nikos noticed her, brought her in, and gave her a seat in the front row. 
I came back to Canada in 1975 and returned to Greece in April of 1976 and visited Nikos for the last few days of the season at his new club, the theater on Sina Street in Sintagma. He performed again with Dona Samio, but also with Marisa Koch, Chalores, and two musicians I had not known before, Chrysanthos and Kostikas Tsakalidis. Nikos did a set playing and singing Kritika with Chrysanthos and Kostikas singing Pondiaka, trading songs, just the three of them. It was one of the most memorable music events I have experienced. As it turned out, I didn't work again with Nikos, but I did end up shortly afterwards working with Chrysanthos and Kostikas and playing Pondiaka, which I still continue to do now. The last time I saw Nikos was in Toronto in the late 1970s, when he came here with Stelios Van Vakaris to play at Rena Kumiotis Club Fantasia on Bloor Street. We hung out a lot, and I chauffeured him around for all his shopping trips. <laughs> Perfume. <laughs> the hardest part was trying to explain to Nikos why he had to put his cigarette out when we went to the bay at Blue and Young. <laughs> the concept of our new no smoking in stores bylaw was quite strange to him. <laughs> I see you, Rania, every time I go to Greece and visit a record store. It's heartwarming to see the statue that Nikos still has with the public, even 30 years after his death. And by the way, I never did find out exactly what was in the letter that Ganakos wrote. <laughs>